Hey everybody, let's go ahead and continue looking at our related rate problems. Um, we're going to look at two problems. We're going to look at the classic cone problem and we're going to look at the classic sliding ladder problem. And they're both really good problems to look at when we're discussing the topic of related rates. All right, so water is running into a conical tank at the rate of nine cubic feet per minute. So again, one of the things we want to do is identify all the given quantities. So if we're looking at the units, it tells us that that's a rate of change of volume. Okay, and it's going to be positive. So we're doing our decoding here. All right, so we've got this water. It's running into a tank at the rate of 9 cubic feet per minute. The tank stands vertex down. So over here as best I can. I'm a little worried. Okay, I'm going to draw a cone. That's our conical tank. Uh, its height is 10 feet. And it has a base radius. This is the base of 5 feet. You know, always watch out for those problems. They're going to give you the diameter. And of course, divide that by 2 to get your radius. Okay, so we have a height of 10 feet and a base radius of 5 feet. All right. How fast is the water level rising? All right, well, when we decode that expression right there, how fast? That's a rate of change. How fast is the water level rising? Okay, so when we look at this conical tank here, we're talking about R, the radius, and we're talking about H here, um, the height. Uh, we're putting water in here, so I'm just going to kind of draw in here an arbitrary amount of water. Say so that's kind of where the height of the water is. So we might want to look at kind of looking at the diagram a little bit more and saying, okay, that's the radius of the water, and this is going to be the height of the water. Okay. So I'm just going to put that out here. Okay, so we have R and H. So R and H in this case, um, in context, represent the radius and height of the water, not the cone. All right, how fast is the water level rising? Well, what's the change in the height? So I guess I'm going to use H. So we're going to find a rate of change of height with respect to time when the water is six feet deep, when the height, when H is actually six feet. Ah, that's about all I have. So um, let's think about the equation that ties all this together. Uh, we're talking about the volume of a cone. We're talking about the height of a cone, etc. So we're talking about a cone. We're talking about the volume of a cone. All right, so this looks like the volume formula, the form of the equation that we're going to differentiate implicitly with respect to time. So, well, here's, here's a little trouble for us. Here's a little issue. Um, we do know from our past work that we're going to have to do the product rule if we implicitly differentiate with respect to t. We're going to have to do the product rule on r squared and h. Well, I want you to think just for a second what that would look like. Uh, well, the derivative of r squared... Uh, well, if we're doing the product rule, it'd be the first r squared times the derivative of h, which is dh dt, uh, which is good because we're looking for dh dt, um, and then plus the second factor h with respect to the first factor r squared. Well, if we differentiate r squared with respect to time, we're going to get 2r dr dt. And I want you to just notice they didn't give us any information about the radius of the water when the height is 6. We could find it. Okay, um, kind of an alternate way, but they didn't give us any information about the rate of change of radius. They didn't tell us anything about the RDT, and they didn't tell us anything about radius. So we might have a little trouble when we go and do the product rule here in finding some things that we need. Okay, we could do it that way. Um, the differentiation with the product rule is a little more involved. I'm going to provide you with an alternate um, way to solve this problem. Okay, a classic cone problem. When you look at this cone, Okay, we've really got similar triangles going on here. Okay, we have the triangle of the conical tank and we have the uh, triangle of the water. So let's set up a ratio, uh, proportion. The radius is to the height of the water as 5 is to 10. So we know that relationship. R is to H is 5 is to 10. So the radius is half the height. Easy enough. All right, now, I, I, like I said earlier, you could do the product rule here, and then when you need to find R, you have a relationship that you can go back to and find R, okay? 
Um, but before we even have to do the product rule, here's something else. Let's say we want to get rid of the variable r because we don't have information about it. Okay, well, in a cone problem, using this um, proportion right here that's always going to result from the similar triangles, okay, what we're going to do is cross products. We have this relationship. I'm going to solve for r, and I'm going to get h over 2, or 1 half h. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, the radius is a half h. We knew that. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm actually going to insert for r a half h. The whole reason is I want to get rid of r. I don't want to differentiate a product. And if I can go down to one variable, it's all good. Okay, so I'm going to put in a half h, or h over 2. Uh, let's see, I think I'll do h over 2. So I'm not doing any um, differentiation just yet. Let me do a little cleanup. h squared over 4 gives you the fraction. You square the top and the bottom, and this is times h over 1. A uh, little more cleanup yet. Um, we have the constant part of this product, 5 over 12, and then we have the variable part, which is just h cubed. All we, get, all we did again is we established a relationship of similar triangles, we used proportions, um, we solved for one of the variables, okay, so that we could put it back in here and uh, reduce this volume formula to just in terms of h. Now we need to continue into our problem. So let's differentiate with respect to time on both sides. Okay, looking at this over here, um, this is just your simple power rule. Uh, you could leave the pi over 12 out front and apply the constant multiplier rule on h cubed, but I'm just going to do it all together. The power rule says 3 pi over 12. Well, 3 times pi over 12 is going to reduce to pi over 4. Okay, h squared times the derivative of h with respect to time. Uh, we're finding dh dt, certainly your choice from this point forward. Do you uh, plug in the values now? I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave the units out of my work just because it becomes a little more cumbersome. So where dv dt is, I'm going to insert 9. And h was at 6 squared. So we're trying to find the rate of change of the height when the height is 6. And then what do we have? dh dt? Okay, uh, let's see here. 9 equals 36 divided by 4, 9 pi. Continue solving, dividing both sides by 9 pi, and I'm going to trade sides. So the rate of change of the height with respect to time is going to be 9 divided by 9 pi. Or what, 1 over pi? Okay, let's indicate units of measure. We need to put a, 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 some units here on our problem. When you think about what you're finding, you're finding a change of height over time. The time here would be minutes. Looking back in the problem for any kind of clues, minutes. All right, and we're talking about a change in height that's one dimensional. It's not area, square units. It's not volume, cubic units. It's one dimensional, it's height and the unit of measure is feet in this problem, uh, so this is going to be my answer right here. So, 1 over pi feet per minute. Classic cone problem. In this particular cr problem, we wanted to get rid of, I guess we're getting rid of r, so we set up the ratio, do cross products, we solve for r, and dumped it in. You m may not remember, but one of the first things you did in your pre-cal year was you solved literal, literal equations where you had two equations and you solved for one of them to substitute into the other to get this equation in terms of another variable. We very well could have wanted to get rid of h, so in that case I would have solved for h 
Okay, dumped that value in here and had my equation all in terms of R for this volume formula. So it made differentiation, differentiation easy. I didn't have to do the product rule. Okay, will that always happen with the cone problem? Yes, the cone has the similar right triangles. So it's kind of an interesting problem there. All right. Um, I think I'm going to go to a second video just so that I have the necessary time to do the latter problem. So I'll see you in just a second.